Who needs more games when you can play PSP games right on your PS Vita? And guess what? You don't need to download and install any additional firmware either. All the games I'm about to mention can be downloaded on the PSN store and transferred right over to your PS Vita. Here's my top 10 best PSP games to play on your PS Vita. <laughs> Number 10. Street Fighter Alpha 3 Max. In my opinion, the definitive version of Street Fighter Alpha 3. It includes all the characters that were ever released on previous consoles, as well as the four that were only available on the Game Boy Advance. There's also the PSP exclusive character, Ingrid, taken straight from Capcom Fighting Evolution. Not only that, but all the additional characters now have their own in-game storylines and ending. I'm quite familiar with the arcade version, so I can tell you that almost all the frames of animation are included in this port, with the exception of one minor omission. I think one of the characters had their walk animation altered or something. I can't remember, but you know what? I guarantee no one else is gonna notice. Not only does this version of Street Fighter Alpha 3 have every gameplay mode offered previously, it also contains an exclusive PSP tag mode that allows characters to switch in and out, much like the Versus crossover series. My only nitpick about this port is that because of how the controls are laid out, your hands will get a little cramped playing it. Who needs the Street Fighter 30th anniversary when you've got Alpha 3 Max? It was great on the PSP, but it looks and plays even better on the PS Vita. Hadouken! Number 9. Patapon. I'm not very good at rhythm based games, so this one took a long time for me to get a hang of. But once I did, I was hooked. In Patapon, you control an army of what I'm assuming are little black eyeballs, marching from left to right. In order to get them to march, you must tap the right sequence of face buttons in time with the drum rhythm. Not only can you get the eyeballs to march, but they can also attack and even defend. I found this quite difficult at first because I just wasn't sure when to hit the face buttons, and every time the little eyeballs would chant, my timing would get thrown off even more. Eventually, I developed this weird habit of just nodding my head back and forth to help keep in line with the main rhythm. Overall, I found the game pretty charming. With a simple but colorful art style, Patapon is a pleasure to look at. It has a cute soundtrack with funny little voiceovers. I wouldn't exactly say it's a relaxing game, but it is addicting. There's plenty of enemies to encounter and monsters to fight, with over a hundred weapons and items to collect. It's a well-known franchise on the PSP, with two other sequels released. I'm a little surprised Sony never made one for the PS Vita. Number 8. Power Stone Collection Capcom did an amazing job in bringing this franchise over to the PSP. For games that were developed on the Dreamcast hardware, I was really surprised at how well these conversions turned out. Power Stone 1 in particular. The frame rate might be a tad slower than what I remember, but everything else holds up beautifully. Graphically, detail is sharp with fluid animation just like it was on the Dreamcast. The sound and music is also crystal clear. Power Stone 2 on the other hand, an excellent port in its own right, does exhibit a few more frame rate drops than its predecessor. I also did notice some of the stage transitions took more time to occur. The castle stage for example took a little while longer for the camera to pan up, as did the flying ship stage which took a while for the whole thing to come crashing down. It's probably because of the bigger environments and more enemies on screen. All graphical detail is intact with only a minor drop in image quality. And even with some of the low res textures, I still think it's rather impressive given the fact that it's a complete port of the original. And may I remind you, it still plays really well. Both games include a new widescreen feature where it doesn't stretch the screen but expands the point of view, allowing more of the background to be shown. It's a pretty neat effect and definitely benefits the widescreen display. There's also additional mini games and extra options to keep you busy. If you're a fan of the Power Stone series, then you absolutely must get this game. Number 7. Daxter. Playing this game almost makes up for the horrible time I spent with Jack and Daxter on the PS Vita. Displaying very few of the performance hiccups that plagued the precursor legacy, Daxter on the PlayStation Vita runs beautifully. I only noticed frame drops when I entered into wide open areas, and even then it only lasted for a second or two. Most of the time, the frame rate was consistent throughout. A pleasant surprise to say the least. The story picks up right after the precursor legacy, and a tiny bit after Jack 2, where Jack is thrown in prison. 
This time, you control the sidekick Daxter, as he must figure out how to rescue his friend, Jack, all while taking on the job of a bug exterminator. Daxter plays pretty much like previous games in the Jack series. It's got your typical platforming sections with some collectibles thrown in. The thing I like most about the gameplay is that it never grows tedious or repetitive. Interesting and changing level design help to break up any monotony that may occur. The game looks great as well. Daxter might even look better here than he did in the Precursor Legacy. I think the developers added some type of fur shader to the model. Not sure what it is exactly, but it looks nice. If you were disappointed by the Jack and Daxter collection on PS Vita, then you should definitely try out Daxter. This is how platforming games should be done on a portable handheld. Number 6. Sega Genesis Collection What more could you ask for? Turning this game on is like jumping into a time capsule. 28 classic titles from the Sega Genesis era, along with a few hidden arcade games as well. If you were a gamer back in the late 80s and early 90s, there's gonna be at least a few titles on here that you'll recognize. You've got Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2, both Echo the Dolphins, and all three Golden Axe games, just to name a few. There's also that horrible port of Virtua Fighter 2 from 1996, which is always good for a laugh, and the highly overlooked and underrated Comic Zone from 1995. Kid Chameleon, Fantasy Star, and Vector Man also round out the field. There's also quite a few titles on here that I've never even heard of myself. Flicky, Decap Attack, and Bonanza Bros is all news to me. By the way, was anyone ever into that Altered Beast game? I always thought it looked so strange. Like, why does he kick like that? All games come with a save feature, so you can continue exactly where you left off. Not only that, but there's hidden artwork and video interviews as well. And there's also a trailer for the upcoming Virtua Fighter 5 game. All games look, sound, and play exactly as I remember them. At least to the best of my knowledge. God, Green Hill Zone brings back so many memories. And that bonus stage from Sonic 2? You know, as a kid, I used to have dreams about that level. And let me say this right now before I forget. Shinobi 3 still kicks ass. In my opinion, one of the best compilation of games ever released. And now you can enjoy it on your PS Vita. My one and only complaint is that there's no Sonic 3, Sonic and & Knuckles, and Sonic Spinball. What's up with that, Sega? Number 5. Pixel Junk Monsters Deluxe. You're all probably wondering why a tower defense game is on this list. Well, I'm wondering the same thing. I'm not really a big fan of these type of games, and quite honestly, this might be the only tower defense game I've ever played. At least that I can remember. I first played Pixel Junk Monsters on the PlayStation 3 back in 2007. The PS3 hadn't been out for that long, so I think there wasn't much of a selection of games to choose from. So I said, what the heck, let's try this out. And to my surprise, I actually enjoyed it. For those who have never heard or played this game before, you basically have to build defense towers in order to keep an enemy from reaching your base. You're only allowed so many enemies to make it to your base before the game is over, so you have to build accordingly. And that's pretty much it. Each defense tower you build have different attributes that are suited for a specific enemy type. So for example, if a spider enemy is approaching your base, you're better off building a long range weapon that can fire off quickly, as opposed to a cannon which takes a lot longer to land a shot. There's a lot more enemy types that are uncovered throughout the game as well. I think the reason why I enjoyed this game so much is because of the music. It is just so relaxing and peaceful, and it complements the visuals so well. Simple, watercolored inspired graphics that just give off a calming effect. It's like laying on a tropical beach next to a coconut tree while the waves are slowly washing up on the shore. Well, maybe it's not exactly like that, but it's close. It's one of those games where I can turn on and just enjoy myself. Plus, I play on the casual setting, which can be a little too easy if you're used to tower defense games, but for me, it provides just the right amount of challenge without stressing me out. Number 4. Loco Roco. When I hear someone mentioning the PSP, I instantly think of Loco Roco. It might be because it was one of the first games I ever played on the handheld console. A platformer where you must guide a multicolored jelly-like creature called Loco Roco through a level by tilting the environment. You do this by either holding down the L or R shoulder buttons. 
Tap both at the same time and your jelly-like creature jumps into the air. Along the way, you can eat little berries, which causes you to grow in size, or call for a lightning strike, which breaks up your loco roco into smaller pieces. There is not much else standing in your way, other than some environmental hazards and a floating Medusa-like head. It's one of those games where you don't feel obligated to do more than you have to. You're allowed to go at your own pace and explore as much or as little as you want. I'm pretty sure there are requirements for getting a high score, but honestly, I just play the game. Visually, Loco Roco is interesting to say the least. I don't know if I can compare it to anything else, because quite frankly, I've never seen anything like it before. It's bright, it's colorful, almost like a cartoon, but weird I guess. I don't know. I mean look at this. How would you describe this? The music is also worth mentioning. It reminds me of Rayman Origins combined with a little bit of that African Safari vibe. If you're into cute, colorful, quirky games, then definitely check out Loco Roco. Number 3. Ridge Racer. Now this is what I want in a portable Ridge Racer. Everything about this game just feels right. The car handling is tight and responsive. The graphics are gorgeous. The music is... Well, you know what Ridge Racer music sounds like. The frame rate is rock solid. Not once did I notice a stutter or a drop in performance. Honestly, I can't remember the last time I played a Ridge Racer that controlled this well. The drift mechanic in this game is so spot on. And the graphics. Oh my goodness, the graphics. It's 2018 and I'm still impressed with the visuals, so I can't imagine how people must have felt when they saw this for the first time in 2004. I will go so far as to say this looks better than Ridge Racer on the PS Vita. The palm trees lined up on the coastline, the tall sky rise building, and occasional aircraft flying overhead are just a few examples of the graphical highlights. Beautiful atmospheric lighting on the horizon and the reflections off your vehicle doesn't hurt either. The game comes with a fun and challenging world tour mode, as well as single race and time trial events. There's a total of 24 courses. That's right, 24. They included updated courses from previous console iterations as well as classic arcade tracks. I just love how simple and clean everything looks. The whole presentation of it all is meant to get you to a race as soon as possible. And for a game on the go, that's exactly how I like it. Playing this makes me wish Namco had put the same amount of work into the PS Vita version. But hey, who needs that when you can play this one? If you want a portable Ridge Racer with a few modern tweaks but still stays true to the original, then play this game. You won't be disappointed. Number 2. God of War Chains of Olympus One of the killer apps for the PSP, but now you can play it right on the PlayStation Vita. Chains of Olympus takes place right before the first God of War and has you taking control of Kratos once again. I have so many fond memories of playing this game. I first got it when it was bundled with the Red God of War Edition PSP, if anyone remembers what that one looks like. Upon starting the game, I was so amazed at how similar it was to the God of War games on the PlayStation 2. It had everything God of War on the console had to offer. Same great gameplay, a ton of enemies on screen, intense boss encounters, and gruesome finishing moves. It was a technical showpiece back when it was released, and it still is even today. Great looking vistas, spiraling staircases, and deep sea diving are just a few of the things you'll encounter in this game. Also, the smoke effects have to be mentioned. They look phenomenal. There was a bit of screen tearing when I played it on the PSP, but for some reason they're less noticeable on the Vita display. Or maybe it's just my imagination. The developers, Ready at Dawn, really tried their best to bring the console experience of God of War to the portable handheld. I think we can all agree that they succeeded. If you call yourself a God of War fan and haven't played Chains of Olympus, then I'm sorry, but you're no fan. Just kidding. But seriously, you guys need to play this game. Number 1. Mega Man Maverick Hunter X I'm sorry guys, I couldn't help it. I had to put this game at number 1. Having grown up on these type of games, I'm a sucker when it comes to Mega Man. There's just something about this game that takes me back to my childhood. I envisioned myself sitting on the edge of my bed, eyes glued to my CRT television set playing Mega Man 2. Ah, uh, good times. Anyway, Mega Man Maverick Hunter X is a remake of Mega Man X on the Super Nintendo. 
The basic gameplay formula hasn't really changed much, but the visuals have been given a complete overhaul. The game still plays like a 2D action platformer, but the graphics are now in complete 3D. Sort of like what Street Fighter looks like now. Character design and animations look super sharp, as do the backgrounds, which include a ton of new animations. Sound and music have also been redone with new voice samples for all characters. I was quite surprised at how much personality it gave the bosses to have their own voiceovers. Now, if you didn't grow up playing Mega Man games, then this is a pretty hard sell. You might look at this game and think it's a little slow and clumsy. Maybe repetitive. Shallow even. But you know what? It's Mega Man and I love it. I love the simple 2D side-scrolling gameplay. I love figuring out the patterns in which you have to fight the bosses. I love the repetitive nature of having to replay stages to find that hidden power-up. Fans of Mega Man will love the tried and true gameplay they've known for so long. And with some cool bonus content thrown in, it's sure to keep you busy even after completing your first run through. Now for diehard fans of the series who swear by the original, I'm not here to say Mega Man Maverick Hunter X is better. I'm here to say it's just as good. All right guys, get to it. The sky's the limit. Let me know what kind of PSP games you're playing on your PS Vita.